Happy New Year! Well, Microsoft Financial New Year. Since it's a new year, let's move straight into a new roadmap update for Microsoft Teams groups. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Mo Mondays. In this week's episode, we are going to be talking about uh, the roadmap, um, the short-term roadmap for Microsoft Teams Rooms. As I mentioned in my introduction, Happy New Year. It's Microsoft's new FY that kicked off in uh, the beginning of July. Uh, and that means obviously we're going to see new focus, we're going to see more budget, we're going to start seeing new products and services, etc. all coming out. So I thought, hey, why not talk about the latest things that are coming to Microsoft Teams Rooms, looking at the uh, roadmap that Microsoft have. Now, um, as we move straight into the uh, presentation, uh, I'll pop them on screen. I wanted to pick out the ones that are, for me, that are the most important and the ones that are starting to roll out uh, in the next month, in August. Man, August. August is already here, next month. Uh, my twins will be two in August, so Terrible Twos is going to kick in. I am not looking forward to it. And this summer has been dismal so far, and I'm hoping the weather perks up. But hey-ho, uh, we, we, we don't win everything, right? But one good thing is, is in August, there are going to be some pretty big updates coming through to Microsoft Teams Room. So let's start off with the first one. The first one is uh, uh, Proximity Join via Ultrasound. This is going to be great. So I want to cast your minds back um, to kind of the COVID era when everybody was rushing and building Teams rooms. Uh, at that time when we were building Teams rooms, they worked. They worked for the way we were working then, the way we all kind of had to work from home and some of us inside of the office, etc. cetera. Um, but now that we've moved on kind of four or five years since, uh, customers are starting to realize that actually those rooms are not fit for purpose. They were fit for purpose back then, but not so much now. So they're starting to do refreshes. Microsoft is also doing the same thing and, and constantly improving that team's rooms experience. Um, and <clears throat> proximity join back in the day used to use Bluetooth. And as great as Bluetooth is, Bluetooth doesn't work very well through materials. And when uh, installers were installing Microsoft Teams rooms, especially the Windows versions, um, those PCs didn't usually sit on a desk. They were tucked away behind a screen inside of a cubby hole or a, or, 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 or a cupboard or whatever it may be. So sometimes proximity join was a bit of a struggle, you know, because it had to try and the Bluetooth signal had to try and get through a whole bunch of different materials before it reached like, your personal device. Um, so Microsoft is now doing proximity join via ultrasound, which comes out next month. Uh, and with ultrasound, humans generally can't hear ultrasound. I think babies can, maybe not. I'm, I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments below if I got that completely wrong. But ultrasound, um, you know, your personal devices will be able to pick that up way easier, way better than Bluetooth. Um, so now when we do the proximity join element, we're not gonna be like standing next to a, you know, inside of a team's rooms and not being able to find that room because of the materials or the Bluetooth signal not being great enough, we will be able to pick them up via ultrasound as well. Um, this one down here, the next one is Microsoft Copilot. Copilot in Teams meetings will take the meeting chat into account. This is part of Teams rooms, but it's also part of the wider teams as well. So when you ask Copilot a question, this time around, it's actually going to be using, you know, the team chat, use that as a consideration. Uh, and then, of course, it will, you know, base its answers based on what's currently going on in that chat within the last few minutes as well. Um, now, you may be reading this one as Team Copilot. It's not Team Copilot. This one's slightly different. Team Copilot is coming to Microsoft Teams Rooms. Uh, I will, I promise I will do an episode on Team Copilot and I'll bring somebody in from Microsoft to, to, to go into a bit more detail about it. Team Copilot is really about having the Copilot as an additional participant inside of the room, which will take your action items, which will take your notes, your transcribing, gauge the mood inside of the room, etc. cetera. Uh, that's not showing up as an August rollout, so that's coming a little later on. Uh, but this Copilot across here, whether you're using Teams Rooms or you're using a desktop or you've got both of them together, will now take the meeting chat into account uh, as well. So that's a, that's a really, really good one. Okay, uh, next one we have here is breakout room support for Microsoft Teams rooms on Windows. Um, so again, this is great. As we move to this new collaborative world and, you know, there's a lot of remote particip participants out there, organizations are now starting to really love breakout rooms. Um, so, you know, when you have your team meetings and they're like, okay, you know, go ahead and figure something out <clears throat> and come back after 10 minutes and then you create breakout rooms. If you have a Microsoft Teams rooms in the mix, you can't add them into a room. You're kind of excluded from that. Even though you're physically there in the room, you can't add that into like a virtual room. 
Now you can. So from August onwards, you will be able to assign a Teams Rooms on Windows into a breakout room as well. Uh, and of course, continue that conversation in there as well. Uh, next one, right, what do we have? We have Microsoft Teams custom background for Teams Rooms on Android. Uh, you've seen, I've done a few videos before about how to create custom backgrounds for Microsoft Teams Rooms and Windows. I got many, many questions after that asking about, well, when's it coming to Android? And we kept pitching that back into Microsoft and Microsoft kept saying, it's coming soon, it's coming soon, it's coming soon. And finally, it should be landing or rolling out from next month as well. So. Um, you will be able to use a custom background inside of a Teams uh, Rooms on Android now. Uh, but it gets better. If you saw my video last time, there was a bit of tinkering that needed to be done to get a custom background onto Windows. Uh, and one of the things that we really wanted to do is just create a GUI where you can upload an image uh, and then it gets pushed down to an MTR. Guess what? Microsoft have delivered. They are doing that exact uh, thing for Teams Rooms on Android. So you will be able to upload a custom background image onto the Teams Admin Center, and then that will then push across onto your uh, devices as well. And, you know, um, the extended room display, the touch console, the traditional room display, they can all have individual images on there as well. So that's 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 really, really good. I'm excited about that. Of course, you do need to have a Teams Rooms Pro license. So, you know, if you're a basic user, that's another excuse for you to move on to the Pro license. Um, I don't know if you're still using basic. If you are, you're missing out a ton of great features on Teams Rooms. Move to Pro. Pro will give you all the latest updates and uh, all the new features that Microsoft pushes out. Right, next one, join Zoom meetings with an ID and passcode from a Teams Rooms on Android. So this is available on Windows already, I believe it is. Um, but in the past, if you wanted to use direct guest join, which is the ability to join into third party meeting providers like WebEx and you know uh, Zoom, etc., cetera, um, you would need to send a invite out onto the MTR and then the MTR would read the invite and then provide you with a want to join um, uh, icon if everything goes right. A lot of times what you find is, especially with Zoom invites, people will add different comments and things into the invite. And then when that gets pushed to an MTR, the MTR struggles to read and find the right information. Uh, this way, um, you don't have to worry about that. So even if it comes up saying Zoom meeting and you don't have a join option because you've had a few issues, you can actually just join using the ID and passcode. And for Zoom users out there, uh, a lot of Zoom users will actually just do that anyway. They don't click invites or whatever it may be, or the join option in an invite, uh, they'll find any device that supports Zoom uh, and they'll just type in an ID and the passcode and you're in there straight away. And now Teams Rooms and Android will support that as well. So you don't actually have to click an invite. Now, as long as you have that ID and that passcode, you can type it in and it will connect you straight into that Zoom meeting. And then once you're done, revert back to uh, Microsoft Teams Rooms. Okay, next update. Microsoft Teams, digital signage on Teams Rooms and Windows. So Ilya actually, uh, Ilya Bookstein actually <clears throat> announced this a few weeks ago, I think during Infocom, if I'm correct. Um, and this is a big one, actually. You know, since day one, since Microsoft Teams Rooms, you know, was kind of first out there in the market in the early days, a lot of customers were really asking about, well, hey, how do I use digital signage? You know, I don't just want to see a clock inside of a room. If the room's not being used, I want to be able to have some digital signage pop up across there. Um, <clears throat> some OEMs managed to get it going on some of their devices. Um, so for example, HP Poly on their Android bars uh, support app space. Um, so you're able to actually run digital signage uh, on there, but it's not really a Microsoft supported thing. It's an OEM supported thing. There may be other OEMs out there that can do it as well. I definitely know HP Poly can do it. Um, but this time around, digital signage is going to be made available on Teams Room Windows. That will come from the likes of, um, you know, partners that will be supported will be things, uh, partners like AppSpace and XOGO. I don't know how to say that if there's a short way of saying it. If there is, comment down below. But XOGO uh, and AppSpace, absolutely. If you use them, you will be able to apply those URLs into Teams Rooms and Windows, and it will do your digital uh, signage uh, across there as well. The good thing is, is you can um, uh, rem you can manage all of that using the uh, Pro Management Portal. Um, so when you're using the Pro Management Portal, you can configure tenant wide or room specific digital signage settings. Um, so that's going to be amazing. Again, Teams Rooms uh, Pro license customers will have that uh, as standard. So hopefully that should save you a bunch of money uh, as well on there. 
What do we have um, next? <clears throat> custom backgrounds on team, Teams panels. We've got custom backgrounds on Windows. We've got custom backgrounds on Android. And now we are bringing custom background uh, on Teams panel as well. What is a Teams panel? A Teams panel is that device that sits on the outside of a room uh, that tells you whether the room is busy or if it's free and where you can go ahead and reserve. Uh, it's already got some pretty cool backgrounds in there. You know, I quite like the, the, the Teams panel backgrounds that sit on the outside of a room. However, a lot of organizations want to add their you know, their, their company logos on there. In fact, <clears throat> most organizations that I go to that have Teams panels on the outside of the room generally name their rooms based on location. I'll give you an example. HP Polly's office is in the Gherkin in London. Uh, and in fact, I think Microsoft Paddington are the same as well. <clears throat> they basically name their rooms based on iconic landmarks in the city that they're in. So we've got a room called London Bridge and Tower Bridge and Westminster and all of those ones. Um, you could, if you wanted to, actually have a picture of Westminster or a picture of Tower Bridge on there by applying a custom background uh, on your Teams panel. Again, that will be configured using the Teams Admin Center. Um, and this feature will be available for Teams Rooms Pro and Teams Shared Device License Panel. So as long as you've got either one of those licenses on your Teams panel, uh, you will be able to apply a custom background. Again, that's coming out uh, in August as well. Uh, next one we have across here is... Um, I think this is the last one, actually. Microsoft Teams Rooms on Windows uh, will now support presenters in Town Hall. Uh, so this is um, <clears throat> actually quite a big one, if you ask me. Whenever I've been asked to become a presenter on a Town Hall, if you don't know what a Town Hall is, a Town Hall is a one-to-many type of presentation, which is controlled with like a virtual studio, et cetera. Um, now, the best presenters out there, especially those really big Town Halls, will actually have a studio with, you know, a contracted company that'll come in and deal with all the lighting and everything else. Uh, and then there's most of us that will be sitting at home with a small little webcam, hoping that the audio is right and the lighting's right and the image comes out great, etc. Would it not be great to be able to actually become a presenter and utilize a Teams room, which has a great camera, great mic, great speakers, and have studio-like quality uh, video going across? If the answer is yes, don't worry, Microsoft is now bringing that support into a Teams room. So if you have a Microsoft Teams rooms on Windows, you're going to already have a better camera than what, what you'll have on your laptop, as an example, better audio than what you have on your laptop uh, as well. And this time you are going to look absolutely stunning and perfect when you deliver your speech uh, uh, on a town hall as well. Uh, so there you have it, guys. Those are the big roadmap items that are coming out in the next month <clears throat> excuse me there are plenty of other roadmap items that will be coming out a little later on uh as i mentioned earlier on that disclaimer is dates may slip it's just down to bug finding microsoft you know etc uh, but they should all start rolling out from the next month hopefully you found this episode uh interesting where i've tried to make it concise and put it all into one place uh, as always be sure to like subscribe and comment down below and no doubt i shall see you on the next episode of moment days ciao